previous video, I was talking about encoders and decoders, translators, um, and also how you need to have like a system for like in the old console days where you have different applications you can pipe into each other. Um, and so that's what I'll be explaining in this video what I mean by all of that. So one interesting thing that I've noticed every time I write code, I always go through and read through it afterwards to see like what the actual solution that ends up being. And no matter what the problem was that I had, the solution is always the same. You always have data in one form, and you have to encode it into another form. And the only thing that really changes is, well, what is the data you're trying to translate, and how, how are you translating it? But it's always the same problem, and the solution is always the same. You some uh, series of if statements, for loops, and whatnot. But it's always fundamentally the same problem. You have to have data in one form and encode it or decode it. Um, so, like encoding and decoding, if we Look at like what um, uh, that means in the abstract, or what those are in the abstract. Um, it would be translation. The only difference between like a, an encoder is a translator and a decoder is a translator. The only distinction is that like whether you're going from or to, and that's the N and D in, in the encoding and decoding. And so. Whether the task is encoding or decoding or translating, we can sort of call it translating. So that's like the in the abstract, what we're actually doing is we're translating from one data to another. And any application is just ends up having a series of translators that are then chained together in some way to complete the task. And a lot of the time the translators, the translators end up writing over and over again. Um, sometimes they're, they're new to me, but they're not new to someone else because they've already programmed it in some library before. Um, and so if, if you want to train an AI to be an expert in software, we have to train it to look for this specific pattern of, of translating so that then you can see, okay, well, what are all of the different types of translators that we have? What are the different ways that these translators are stacked together and assembled? And... Um, how can we use that to solve uh, other problems? Um, so, it would probably be useful to go over an example application. So, you know what I mean when I'm saying translating and whatnot, and how I, that's basically all that you're doing. So, here we have. A calculator written in HTML. So the first part of the application is that it has to display this user interface on the screen. And the way that it does that is that you have the layout that's written in HTML and CSS. And you have a translator that translates that layout into instructions that the video card understands. 
the video card then itself is a translator and it translates those um, instructions for drawing into um, my 1920 by 1080 screen of pixels. And so that's like sort of the first translation chain just to get this to get this user interface up. Okay, so now the next one is uh, the event handlers, right? Because you've got to be able to detect when I come and uh, press on a button. And so with event handling, um, that you're looking at a stream of data. And so that uh, stream of data, um, right, we have two different streams of data, the stream of data coming from my keyboard, the stream of data coming from my mouse, um, and then that stream of data gets translated into events, um, right, when, the, when that stream, something in that stream changes, an event happens, a key is pressed, and that gets translated to an event, and that event, so I can chain that into something else of what happens. Uh, this event of me, this mouse press gets translated into the event and then gets sent to the application to tell it to um, display the four on the screen and to put it in memory. Um, and again, to go through the process of then drawing it back on the screen, another chain of translators. Okay, so then we we put in an equation for eight. And so what happened there is we had the equation four plus four that went through a math translator that came up with the result 8. That result 8 got sent down to the video card again to tell it to draw number 8 that could convert to pixels and put it on the screen. And so any application you can see through this lens of um, stacking translators together. What's so frustrating from a software writing perspective is that I can't take advantage of a lot of this knowledge. Like we have libraries that I could include into an application. But the libraries, ultimately, is just a list of translators, right? It's not the chain of translators. That's the application that ends up getting proprietary and secret, right? Um, but ultimately, all software it ends up being the same, right? Like as I went through here, you could easily take those translators and use them, reconfigure it to build some other type of application. Instead of calculating numbers, it's just uh, remembering numbers that I put in or whatever. And you don't really have to code that, like you just have to rearrange it, right? You want to spend the time to go. think about, okay, well, how do I capture the input from my, my keyboard? How do I display it out on the screen? How do I do this calculation? All the trans, everything's already figured out. And, and so then your, your problem is, well, how do I actually make the application, make, do the thing that I want to do? 